All right. Welcome back to 90s Noise. I'm April, and this week you're stuck with just little me, but I've got a very special guest with me here today. You probably know her as Robin Russo from Secret World of Alex Mack, or Ingrid from Boy Meets World, or Grace from Babysitter's Club. Today, I've got the fabulous and gorgeous Natanya Ross. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> My God, I got to bring you everywhere with me. <laughs> Hey, you've done some incredible work. So I've got to, I've got to throw all that out there and everything. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, first I'd like to thank you for joining me today. And I, there's just so much that I love to talk to you about everything, but if you're good, we'll get started. So, um, for those of you, uh, my our listeners, we had actually just talked about secret, uh, secret world of Alex Mack a couple weeks ago, and so I'd like to start asking a couple questions in regards to that, if you don't mind. Sure, ask who. All, <laughs> all right. So, um, one one thing I wanted to know was what was the most memorable episode of Alex Mack to film? I get asked this a lot, and it's a harder question for me because we did so many episodes. <clears throat> Um, and I haven't watched the show in a really long time. I've seen clips here and there. And, uh, of course what I get tagged in, um, but probably, I, I think probably for the most memorable episode for me would be, um, I think it's called the party and it's the one where, um, Robin and Alex get in a really big fight and then they like meet up on this bridge over water somewhere in paradise Valley, USA. And, um, and makeup and you know there's like a little pep talk and um I think probably that one because I just there's so many there are so many cool moments for Robin on that show and so many cool friendship moments for Robin and Alex and you know Ray and all of that it's that's a tough question maybe I need to watch the show again <laughs> I understand I've I've been trying to do like an episode almost every day uh, just to get myself caught back up because it was a show. I was a show that I remember like rushing home to watch after school and everything, uh, especially reruns for me, because uh, when it first came on, I don't necessarily have the specific memories because I was born 91. I'm oh, a little younger you're... than you. Okay, because you were born in 91. Got it. <laughs> so I but I do have older I do have older brothers that um so yeah. I got a lot of that yeah with That's... it. So and That's... Alex Metz was actually one of my brother's favorite shows too and everything. And so I was always gotta do what my brothers are doing That's and awesome. watch what they're watching. Love it. <laughs> so love it. Yeah. So um, now this year is the 30th anniversary from when <laughs> Alex Mack first premiered. Correct. Any, any little things planned for that? I know you guys did for the 20 year. You guys did that 20 year reunion and everything. Right. But, but actually, we didn't even realize it was closer to 25 years. So me and Jason messed that up a little bit by accident, but we do have something planned for the 30 years. We're just, um, we're trying to figure out which direction to go. And once um, it's locked in, we will announce it. Ooh, I'm excited. What I, can, I'm... what I can say for now though, is that um, Jason and I, Jason Strickland, who played Scott Green in the first two seasons, we will definitely be at what a lot of people have probably um, seen some promotion for something called SplatCon, which I think is the first all Nickelodeon themed Comic Con um, ever, from my knowledge. I could, unless I'm missing something, I don't know. You might know better than me, but we've just signed contracts, so we will be there um, as one of the headliners. So that's cool. That's not our 30 year thing, but we will be there, and it's coincidentally in the same month um, as uh, the years. So I've been seeing about that and. It makes me sad that I'm down here in Florida because that's over in California. It's like, oh, come on. Can we... Yeah, that would be. Hey, where ideal. in Florida are you? Uh, so I'm in uh, St. Petersburg. So just outside of Tampa. Is that where they do one of the 90s cons? Uh, they did that I last think... year. 
Okay. Yeah. So we, uh, so me and my co-host Ashley did go to nineties con last year here in Florida. Uh, it was, it was a fun experience. They're doing in Daytona this, this September. And they're doing it as we speak right now. Yeah. They're getting ready for it tomorrow. So Um, um, half of my friends are there. So yeah, that's cool. Well, you never know. Maybe we'll be in Florida in October, you know, or maybe you guys come to California in October. Who knows? I will, you know what I'll be keeping. I'll be keeping my eyes out for that. I've. Uh, okay. I definitely. Cool. That's <laughs> that's it's one thing I love to do is get to meet people that I've grown up watching and everything. And so, you're definitely on the list to actually like see in person. This this works for right now. <laughs> yeah, really. you still got me. Look at that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, Robin's style in Alex Mack. Iconic. Absolutely. Now, did you, was that just more, they just had the wardrobe? Did you have much of a say in it? I know being younger and everything, sometimes you, uh, a lot of times you don't, but I didn't know if like growing with, cause you guys went, did for four seasons, if that's. Seasons, but double episodes. So it's, it, when people are, it feels weird. Cause there were so many episodes Mm-hmm. It's because we did double episodes per season. So we did 28 per season as opposed to back then they were doing 13 per season. So it's really more like a seven season show. Yeah. They just crammed it in all together. I had absolutely no say in this wardrobe. I I, I really wish I could take credit. Um, I've said this in so many interviews. I truly believe. Um, and if anyone can prove me wrong, I will humbly stand down. I really, truly believe she's like the OG goth emo alt girl of Nickelodeon. Yes. I don't see any representation of kids that dressed and felt this way before her. Um, I, I would do anything to have all of that wardrobe back. Like if I just woke up and all over my bed was like every outfit Robin ever wore, I could die happy. Um, but uh, back then I just didn't, you know, I was a teenager and I didn't know how cool some of the stuff was. And, you know, oftentimes they had Robin in like pigtails or these chokers and like stuff that I just didn't understand was going to remain um, a legacy and iconic 30 years later. And and so I was kind of almost a, a opposite of it in, in a way where like, you know, I was like, fuck, part of my language. I cuss a lot. If they're going to make they're going to make me wear pigtails again. I'm sneaking into my trailer and I'm putting on like some extra lipstick. And so I had no say in anything. I really pushed as hard as I could with makeup um, just to get like a little bit extra here and there. Um, um, So some of the makeup looks actually, I did have a say in towards the end. Um, You can tell my hair starts changing a lot towards the end as well. We go from like, you know, I'm so young in the first season and then second season because we had a longer hiatus from one to two, you can tell that I like literally grew up like, yeah, like like an entirely different person, same with season three and then ending in season four. So I think by the, by, you know, our 80th episode or whatever it was, I, I had, I had settled into her aesthetic, um, and learned kind of how to like match her energy with my own, but like also remaining in character as her, if that makes any kind of sense. Absolutely. (laughs) It it does. Absolutely. And so kind of on that same premise, I've got to ask, were you able to take anything from Robin with you when you, when you guys stopped filming? I know you're talking about, you wish you had all those clothes and everything, but did you, did you get a piece of her besides Um, what was left in your heart? Right. Yeah. Um, yes, I did. I don't know where the hell any of it is. Um, Jason Strickland has our cast jacket still, you know, maybe he'll leave it to me in his will and I'll get one back when I'm like 90 years old. I don't know, but I, you know, I'm trying to think of what I have of Robbins. I think mainly photographs, unfortunately what I have, but after every season, they give each character an opportunity to go through their own wardrobe. So like I would get to go look through like the entire rack of Robin's wardrobe for that season and we could buy it at their cost. 
which is pretty sick. And then, yeah. you know, me and Larissa would go in together and she'd be like, I want that of yours. And I'm like, okay, but I want that of yours. So we could kind of like finagle getting a couple of each other's things too. Um, and again, you know, I have no idea where any of this is. Larissa says that she's pretty sure she has a pair of pants that Robin wore in her storage unit. Um, I've spoken with like the guy who did our props and stuff. And he has um, that weird like uh, ladybug backpack that I used to wear. Yeah. And he has that and he has some of the watches and like just some of the littler props. And that's it, my friend. I don't know where anything else is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, I always wonder like what they do with all of the wardrobes and all those props. Like, does it just go and collect dust or do they donate it or? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we definitely had the opportunity to buy a lot of it. I'm sure they recycled some for the following season um, and whatnot. And I don't know if they donated. I don't know what they do. I know now, current day, there's a lot of stores that um, there was this really cool store in um, San Diego that I went to where one of my best friends lives that it's all closed from TV shows, but at like a fraction of the cost. So, you know, like brand, like very high end items that let's say it's a thousand dollars you could buy it for two hundred dollars. And it says like from the set of I'm making something up because I don't know what's going to come <laughs> to my head quickest, like sex in the city. Right. Like yeah. and it's, it's Carrie war in you know, season three, episode four, blah, 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 blah. So maybe they sent some of it off there. But, you know, back in the 90s, there was a place called Out of the Closet that we had. That was a lot of like a wardrobe from television shows and movies. Um, and part of the proceeds, I think, went to help um, the queer communities and AIDS Foundation. So, but I don't know what, what happened, all that stuff from Alex Mack. Maybe I'll try and find out. Maybe that'll be a fun weekend project. I'll yes. call it around. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I'm sure with the nostalgia that's coming back, people would love to get a piece of that and yeah, have it for have it for their own. Mm -hmm. um, so, gotta also talk about your episode on Boy Meets World. Man, the people love it. I don't they know. What to say. Do. I don't know what to say about a one episode, you know, guest star appearance other than it is a true testament to boy meets world how iconic they are and you know i i recently had done pod meets world yes and i i did two episodes of that actually and and i think in hindsight the the kind of best thing i can and i i you didn't even ask your question yet sorry for <laughs> interrupting you but You're i just good it just it's it's so beautiful to me it sparks up so much joy every time i get asked about that show, I just think there was something about Ingrid, like as a character that really resonated with a lot of kids. Um, you know, it's, and it's, it, do, it doesn't age well. I don't think we could yeah. do something like that today, but I think there's, you know, um, something that we can all relate to. And I spoke about this when I, when I did the episode with them recently, I think there's something we can all relate to about not feeling good enough or pretty enough. And then someone kind of coming in and say, well, if you do this, 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 and this, you can be this, 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 and this. And then you do all the things, you become that thing that you thought you wanted and realize that like, you know, usually we're, we're pretty okay if we just really stay true to who we are as human beings, you know? Honestly, you just answered my question anyway. Great, so. great. And I'll say it again for, I'll say it again for the second time. It was life imitates art for me. I felt exactly like Ingrid Iverson in real life and uh, real life. I was only booking roles that like, you know, the, the nerdy best friend, the, you know, uh, in hindsight, my, my favorite girl in the whole wide world, Robin, the kind of weird goth emo girl, you know, and I'm asking my team, like, well, why am I not going out for the pretty girl or this or that? And, and, um, you know, I get kind of emotional when I think about it because it really was, something that resonated and stayed with me so much too but boy meets world was the first time I got to show the world I guess yeah. that um that I could do both so I was doing both for Ingrid Iverson and for Natanya Ross you know absolutely and that also I think that like you said it resonated with so many people because 
so many, I, I know for me personally, like never was like Miss Popular or anything like that, but to see that transition that really provides a, you can be anything you right. want and right. you don't need to take what other people say about you. And if somebody's got you labeled as something, you can change that if you, if you want to. Like, it's not, you have to, you can change that if you want to. You and answered it perfectly. <laughs> you did a better job than me. I, I, I've, I've, I've done like Boy Meets World we rewatches just because I mean, there are so many and it's a, it's a nice one oh, to have in the yeah. background and, and yeah. stuff. And every single time when your episode comes on, I actually do stop and watch it because that did just resonate so much with me. And mm -hmm. I do have to ask. Yes. Did you actually jump in the in a pool? I did not jump in a pool. I went backstage and um whatever department it was, I can't remember, hosed me down. I think they actually really hosed me down and just like covered my face a little bit so makeup didn't get completely fucked up and then just threw those glasses back on me and you know, they yelled action and I ran back out. So, yeah, not I didn't actually jump in a pool. <laughs> Had to ask, had to ask. Had to get the screen, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Now, kind of transitioning um, back to a full girls cast, pretty much, with Babysitter's Club. Yes. You're and that, that was you, because um, it looks like you guys, because it came out like 95, so you guys probably filmed in like 94 or so. Um, um, yeah, I think that sounds right. Uh, yeah. so you, you were spent a lot of time with Larissa, her being in both. Um, and then, oh no, my, my video, I'll be back in just a shit. Let me get that. Sorry. I, like, I hope I don't have to entertain the crowd. What do I do? <laughs> oh, uh -huh. yes. I, I, yes. Sorry. Continue on. You're, you're good. Uh, so but then also in this one, you kind of were playing more of a mean girl in it. What, right. how, how'd you feel about that? Like you're going back and forth between Robin and Grace. So, yeah, um, I had pops throughout my career in the nineties where I did have an opportunity. Like, I guess back then, you know, they say like, um, we were like the OG mean girls and, that I think comes along with the connotation of like pretty girls, mean girls or whatever. And um, so, um, yeah, Larissa and I just talked about this recently. We were laughing our asses off because we went from Alex Mack season one and I don't even know if we had done season two yet before Babysitter's Club. I honestly, I have no idea, but you know, our... Um, they Nickelodeon didn't know we were going to be such a big show when we first came on. The creator was, you know, mortgaging his house to pay for some of the special effects. We didn't know we would end up like the number one kid show in the world. Cable, you know, oh, yeah, you know, network shows had us beat. Um, so we go from that to the Babysitters Club, which is like a multi, multi, multi million dollar um, budgeted film, uh, feature film. And me and Larissa were like, shit, this is what trailers are supposed to look like. This is what craft services actually looks like. like hilarious. So that part was funny. Um, you know, I loved going back and forth and playing different characters. Um, and I did that as often as I could, even when I was on Alex Mack. I, you know, you'll notice I'm definitely missing from a few episodes here and there. And that's because um I think my team kind of banked on me booking other jobs. So they were really smart contractually with how we set myself up on the show very, very, very early on, which I, I'm very appreciative of because I got, you know, to go on and do all these cool things like be on Boy Meets World for a week here and um, Babysitter's Club was during a hiatus. But um, I, um, yes, so that was a twofold question. I was spending a lot of time with Larissa. Marla was also my best friend in real life as well. And her and I had just done Freaky Friday right before Babysitter's Club. Um, 
so we we were in a groove like we were we were locked in locked and loaded in in the groove and um grace was a mean girl but not really she was like yeah kind of a mean girl with a heart a heart of gold like i guess trying to you know um again like one of these times we have in life when like we're just going along with something because we want to fit in or we don't want to you know get called out by our friends and we're like trying to stand up for what we think is right um so she was mean ish she was mean by association yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, also nobody does um like a bitchy mean girl like marla did in the 90s so oh my gosh i'm not gonna even say i was a mean girl i'm i'm gonna take like the emo goth for myself and i'm gonna just <laughs> I'm going to leave uh, the bad girl for Marla because God, she fucking perfected that. So yeah, she but I love doing babysitters club. It was coming of age for us too. It was coming of age for you guys or, you know, back then the audience and even people that are rewatching it for the first time. Now we were all the same age in real life as what we were playing on screen. So it was coming of age for us too. Like Austin O'Brien was my boyfriend when we filmed. That was my first boyfriend, you know, real yeah kind of if, if that can be a thing at 14 years old or I was 13 um so my first boyfriend he was my first kiss in real life I know crazy oh. um and, you know we were all figuring out life too it just didn't look like the babysitters club it looked like a bunch of child actors that were thrown onto a movie set together for four months to you know have the time of their lives so yeah that's awesome. That's that is one that I I'd seen because obviously, like you're saying, you and Larissa being on it from Alex Mack, it's like you gotta you gotta just keep up with that. And right. I'm one of those people that if I find people that I like acting wise, I I want to watch pretty much everything that they're in. Well, and thank, God for, thank you so much. <laughs> that's I mean. <laughs> uh heck I'll even throw it up I've I've not I didn't necessarily grow up with 90210 but I did watch your episode the other day and so, yeah it's weird it's a weird episode it's it's definitely an interesting it's, one but it's, you know it's also, I, sorry I'm so sorry to cut you off you're good you're good no go ahead go ahead you go I insist <laughs> I was just gonna say it was very weird for me because I've watched like two episodes in season one and then jumping to season nine <laughs> yeah I was like what I, I was texting Ashley I'm like what happened to these characters like what's going on and she's like girl I, I didn't make it to that far myself like in the whole series and stuff I'm like okay okay so I'm okay but well, I don't want to know what happened <laughs> I'm going to age myself a little bit here, but it's pretty easy to figure out how old I am. While you guys were all watching Alex Mack, I grew up on 90210. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was 10 years old with like a Dylan uh, heart pillow on my bed, upset. I, I don't know why I was allowed to watch this show at nine years old, but I was obsessed with this show. So when I got that episode, like to me, anything else I had done up until that point, there was, gonna, there was not going to be anything cooler to me than playing this character on 902 and 0. And my hair did not look like that before the episode, P.S. Like, um, so I'm trying to think, I, I, don't, I can't even remember exactly what I had done right before that, but my hair had grown back out and it was longer and it was probably like a strawberry blonde. It was either this color mixed with some blonde in it or whatever. And they said, you know, we wanna cut all of her hair off and dye it black, jet black. And my team said, no, just put a wig on her so I had to go down there to try on the wig. The wig looked ridiculous and it just, it wasn't working. So they offered me a certain amount of money to cut off all my hair and dye it black. And I was like, I'll take it. Cause what they didn't know is I would have done that for free. So just to be on the show, I didn't care. I was like, I, you know, I played, I played, I was trying to be smooth. I'm like, oh man. All right. I mean, I guess I'll do it if you guys really want me to. And you know, and, uh, but I was so excited to do that. And, but it's, it's such a strange character too. And I've, I've, I actually have gone back and rewatched that episode specifically 
And um, yeah, very bizarre character. <laughs> but, you know, I was on 90210 and that was a, a dream come true. So there you go. Absolutely. And that's something that's a box checked on the bucket list, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure. Awesome. So now kind of transitioning a little bit from the 90s, we'll also kind of talk about your life now and how your experiences in the 90s made you the woman that you are today. You're absolutely gorgeous. You're killing it. You, um, because you are uh, a working in a um, facility. I, I can't remember the name. I had it written okay. down. Don't, don't worry. Let me help you. You want me to help you out a little? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got you. Um, so yeah, um, the 90s were, were so significant to my life. Mm -hmm. um, to this current day still, as you know, I do a lot of autograph signings and appearances and cool stuff like this and meeting amazing people like you, being able to do podcasts and going back and reliving the experiences through questions on interviews. And, um, and you know, to be honest, I made some of the best friends out of that decade. And even still to this day, people are, you know, I'm blessed with people coming into my life that I, I did kind of know in that time era, whether I, I was really close or not really close. And then as adults, we get to connect, um, which is amazing. You know, my roommate is Sean Weiss and we weren't best friends in the nineties, but we had these same experiences for sure. So we get to be great friends in 2024. And like, that's just one name on a long list of like incredible humans. And, um, yeah, for, so I, I took a break from acting. Um, I think most of most people know that have any interest in my life <laughs> that, um, I had a, you know, I battled drug addiction for a decade and, um, and then got sober. Uh, I haven't drank al alcohol in almost 16 years, I think. Um, thank you. Um, uh, I, however, <laughs> I still have to get a couple other things out of the way there. So it's been about 13 years um, that I have had a new way of life and I currently work in drug and alcohol treatment. Um, I help, um, brand and do business development. Um, I'm one of the directors at a rehab in Southern California called restore health and wellness. Yeah. You're like, there that's it is. That's what, that's what it is. Yes. And I do a lot of, yeah. I do a lot of stuff in the treatment and mental health space. I'm a huge mental health advocate. Um, not just for people, also for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I have struggled with mental health um, most of my life. Um, more recently, I've gone through a divorce. I've been pretty uh, open about talking about that. Um, only so if there's somebody out there that's struggling with um, feeling alone or less than or abandoned or left behind or whatever, the gamut of emotions we can feel just by getting like fucked up by life. You know, life is tough sometimes yeah. that you know, you're not alone. Cause I feel that too. And I think sometimes there's people that take comfort in knowing that like, you know, I think when we think about celebrities, they feel untouchable and invincible and that there's no way this person could have ever experienced what I'm feeling. And that's why I think it's so important to continue these conversations about mental health because, um, you know, to one destigmatize it, there's nothing embarrassing or shameful about it. i struggle with depression and anxiety and OCD um, and, you know, and formerly alcoholism and drug addiction. And those are things I will always have to be vigilant about staying um, on top of. Um, and um, so alongside with what working there, I um, run an organization, nonprofit organization called WAT and the acronym stands for the Women's Association of Addiction Treatment. And I'm the president of um, the national board of that. And I've had, I've started my own organizations with feeding um, the homeless people out here in California. And I'm currently helping start a nonprofit organization that supports families of um, people su suffering with mental health and drug addiction. And we are um, slowly, slowly but surely trying to figure out how to advocate and also incorporate into this curriculum a support system for um, adolescents so we can kind of help with a little bit of 
education and prevention at an earlier age, um, even preteen. Um, so we can just do whatever little part we can in the um, really, really scary and, and horrible fentanyl epidemic that we're looking at. Yeah. And I have baby cousins, you know, that, that, um, you know, the youngest is uh, 12 years old and 13 and it goes, you know, and the oldest is 15. And I'm looking at these kids like, man, what I was doing at their ages, I hope they never find out, but it was a lot less dangerous of a world drug wise back then. And, um, yeah. and I, would, I would be mortified and horrified and scared to fucking death. If these kids ever got themselves in a situation where they pick something up that had fentanyl in it or what have you. So I want to get in there as early as we can. And so that's part of that nonprofit. And then, um, you know, you guys pushed me. I got way too many DMs from you guys. And finally I said, fuck it, you know, and I started acting again. And um, most recently signed with a manager who's incredible. And I knew her when I was younger too. And she was, she's this incredible actress and, um, and, you know, decided that she wanted to, um, instead of acting, she really wanted to help guide actors careers, which is so fucking cool. She's like Emmy award winning and was on like a million episodes of these uh, soap operas and she's just so incredible and has been really supportive, you know, where I've, where I've been a little timid and yeah. hesitant and scared to come back. And again, like if we're talking about mental health, it's those thoughts of like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I'm an emotional person. So I get choked up really easily. But, you know, those thoughts of like, well, I'm 42 now. No one cares about me anymore. Am I still pretty? Bullshit. Well, thank you, April. I know you do. So if I do a movie, at least one person's going to watch it. Absolutely. I'm kidding, but it's the story we tell ourselves. It's the, mm -hmm. the shit our brain says to us. And it's it's fucked up because it sounds like a voice that sounds exactly like our own, right? Because so it's Absolutely. hard to battle against that. So it's like, am I too old? Am I pretty enough? Am I this enough? That enough? Can I still act? Am I still funny? Am I still you know, do I still have like a dramatic actor living inside of me somewhere? And, um, you know, listen, life is short and, um, I love what I've done in the mental health space. It's meant everything to me, but, um, I, I know that I'm like a true blue born entertainer. It lives inside of me. Um, I think she just took a very, very long nap and she woke up and was like, let's go, you know, I'm rested, mm -hmm. sharp and ready. And, everything is in the universe's timing. So yeah. I love that. I love to hear that you are getting back into it and I cannot wait for that. Like you're, you're talking about mental health and everything. I myself deal with depression, anxiety have since I was like seven or eight years old. I mean, hell, like I even have a, I don't know if you're able to see. I here. can't let me, things blurring it out. Yeah. Let me, let me do it. So you also, I see. wanted to say really quickly, I forgot to say my manager's name is Chanel, um, Gray Faulkner and it's at complete, um, management group. So I, I do want to like give credit where credit's due. Absolutely. I see behind you. That looks like professional photo ops from potentially nineties con. Am I right? So, um, or this... some, yeah. This one is from 90s Con. I knew it. The rest of them are from different ones. Um, that one is the all of they are real quick. I'm so curious. Yeah. Okay. So uh so Lou Diamond Phillips and Kiefer Sutherland. Okay, amazing. Uh, Carrie Elwis. Oh god, okay. Ernie Reyes Jr. Amazing. Uh below him is Billy Boyd. Okay. And Stephen Amell. Okay. The Four Hobbits from Lord of the Rings. Wow, that must have cost a pretty penny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then John Reese Davies. Okay. Um, Tyler, Tyler Hochlin. Okay. Uh, Ian McDermott of uh, Palpatine, Senator okay. Palpatine from Star yeah. Wars. The Girls of Charmed. Um, we've got okay. Holly, Rose, and Shannon. That's what I was wondering. And, who, and who, what's the other one? This is Kevin Eastman. So he is a co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, that's and cool. I was curious. Who, I was curious who um you would you went for at 90s con. 
That that was the Charmed. one. Charmed. Yes, absolutely. But what I was going to show you is I am enough. I am enough. And yeah, and then my <laughs> so yeah. I've I definitely understand that because that's definitely a a big thing for me too is um yeah. having the mental health and being aware of that and just understanding that yes our mind tells us certain things but we can also push back and tell it better things too so yeah like I like that I think that's a beautiful way to say it yeah yeah well so, we're in it together sister so absolutely so now that you're getting back into acting and um wondered do you have any pieces of advice for current child actors people who are getting into it as a child that you maybe wish you had been that had been shared with you before you had started acting in the 90s yes and i think i think this generation of child actors is looking at a lot of different things than than um my generation i know there's like a what looks like a really fucked up uh, documentary coming out in two days about Nickelodeon. Have you seen what I'm talking I've, about? I know what you're talking but about. Is, yes. Is I don't know that they say, they say the dark side of Nickelodeon, but it seems I've, I've had a lot of people send me this trailer. So I'm assuming it's Nickelodeon ish themed. Obviously we've heard a lot of the stories of a, a lot of the young Disney actors and actresses and Nickelodeon actors and actresses, that have come out and since spoke about, you know, some some pretty um, disturbing issues. I am very blessed that um, on set, I was nothing ever but protected. Um, you know, my circumstances revolved more around my home life. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for me, set was always a very safe place. And right. I had to wake up in the morning and go uh, be somebody else. And I didn't necessarily have to be me for that day. Um, so looking back, I say the same thing every time, if I could go back and give that little version of Natanya some advice, I would say, be careful who you surround yourself with. Really. That's, honestly, that's good advice for anybody. It's I good think. advice for anybody. Yeah. And, and that also, um, you are enough. Yes. Going to be okay. Um, you don't have to do this thing that you think you have to do in order to be this or that or her or him or whatever. Um, and that just, it's okay. You are enough. And, um, but also I, I'm a really big believer in that everything happens in our lifetimes, the universe, exactly the way it's supposed to. So on the other side of that coin, if I hadn't gone through all of that stuff, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today and have been able to have this incredible career in the mental health space for the last 15 years without the experiences I went through in my own personal life. So that's why I kind of like to stick with the like, be careful who you surround yourself with. And I, I really try and adhere to that in my life today as well, because your energy is sacred and what yes. you allow into your energy field is precious and sacred and water seeks its own level. And if you feel like you have a lot of people around you that, um, it, you know, you're getting these kind of visceral reactions, like, I, I don't know. I mean, one, it's probably a good time to check in with yourself and make sure everything is okay. And two, um, you know, uh, in my old age now, <laughs> what I, <laughs> what I have, um, really come to understand is that like, you know, I am nobody without all the people who make sure I remember who I am. So that's been a really important life lesson for me. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. So, uh, gotta ask since, and this, my, our podcast is a nineties podcast. Okay. If you could go back to the nineties and bring one thing with you, to the future, what would it be? Gonna make you think. Like like a 90s toy, like a, a snack that does isn't around anymore. I would bring Robin Russo's entire wardrobe. Hey. Back with me. Absolutely. That's what I, I would bring. Oh yeah. Honestly. That's, what a great answer, right? <laughs> Absolutely. 
No, but really, like, she was so high fashion, so ahead of her time, so ahead of all of our times. And, like, of course, lo and behold, everything is a full circle. And now everybody is dressing like her now. Exactly. And I'm like, I don't have all these thousands and thousands of dollars to, you know. Yeah, I would definitely bring her wardrobe back because she was so dope like in hindsight I wish I had appreciated it a little bit more back then the way I do now but she was she was she was so dope so that's what I would bring yeah you know you know what you guys could do with all these uh reboots and everything uh, and, uh, a show on Robin Russo oh on, like a whole where she where? yeah where she is today that I love that idea. I would happily do it in a heartbeat. We were in talks for many years um, about an Alex Mack reboot and we kind of shopped it around. And um, I think we maybe got held up a little bit by, you know, the powers that be. And um, and so we let it go because we didn't want to like get heartbroken over and over. We were so close and then it didn't happen and so close and it didn't happen. I love the character of Robin. I have like a 10 million ideas of how she would have ended up as an adult. We actually, me and Jason and Daris, um, wrote almost like a, a first full show Bible for like what what a first season would look like for these characters as adults. And um, so... I don't know your lips to God's ears, you know, maybe, maybe we just put it back in the universe and it, who knows, you never know in this crazy Hollywood shit, anything could happen. So. Uh, exactly. I mean, hell, I think that would be fucking phenomenal to I think it'd be see. fucking phenomenal too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, I would, cool. I would love to see that. That would, and make it more kind of like they were trying to do with a uh, Lizzie McGuire, but make it more adult oriented, not yeah, necessarily. To, yeah. We wanted to take like a, a little bit of a darker spin on it. Um, yeah. a bit more like, um, Alex Mack meets stranger things because let's not forget Alex Mack ran what did they say walked so 11 could run yes yeah one of the creators of stranger things was one of the directors on our show sean levy so um you know um yeah a little darker twist on it um maybe more of like a netflix vibe than a nickelodeon vibe yeah and more inclusive we had robin's character um uh, part of the queer community and in the process of like uh, potentially adopting a child just in, in more inclusive of yeah. uh, um, topics that you know we are looking at today in the world and everybody had a really cool little deal like uh, it was it, and it made sense and it fit and it felt like like if we were allowed to do whatever we wanted with our show um, that this is where these humans would have landed and it was it was cool so i you know you never know we'll see i i I, hell i'd love to read the read the outline you guys have and everything that's like it's one of those uh, okay i'd love to read it as long as it came to fruition because it's one of those if you start to read it i'd probably be like give me more give me more (laughs) i turned 50 and the show hasn't been rebooted it's not happening so you can come back when I turn 50 knock on wood oh my god <laughs> 50 and uh, I'll let you read the whole damn thing you can have it I'll I'll send it to you in the mail deal a deal I'm, I'm well, holding you to pact. that girl. it's like our own marriage pact but instead yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get the full Alex Mack reboot script script and show bible so hey. that I, you have my word I, I will hold you to that girl. Thank like you. I, that will be, I'll, I'll be calling you. I'll be like, Natalia. Yeah, where's that? Where's that where, where's yeah. It <laughs> yes. Yes. You got it. Oh, so I'm going to kind of start to wrap it up here and everything, but I did, I was kind of curious. Um, Do you ever wonder what would have been different if you hadn't started acting at such a young age? Sure. Yeah, of course. I definitely wondered what my life would have looked like. Um, But I certainly can't like um, picture or relate to any other life than the one that I had. So um, yeah, 
I mean, all the normal things like prom and just like normal high school, like all the things. But I mean, I wouldn't trade the life I had for anything. Right. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. That's, yeah. I love that. I mean, it was what a, I mean, God, I was so lucky and I had such a cool and robust career and I got to play so many different interesting people and, um, you know, and it has carried over for 30 years. I'm, I'm still so humbled and grateful for the fact that I'm still asked to do stuff like this with you. I'm still, um, doing appearances. I have, um, you know, an opportunity to be an actor again. Like I have, it's, it's just, I'm so blessed. And all of that is because of what I started when I was six months old, you know, and we're still mm -hmm. talking about it at 42. So that's really fucking cool. Like really cool. So I, I've of course wondered, um, but um, I've never felt like I've missed out on anything by any means. Good. Yeah. Good. And then to last question for you, and then um, we'll wrap it up. But I'm curious if there's one set that you wish you could revisit, what set would it be? Alex Mack. Alex Mack. Yeah, Is yeah. there like a specific, like the school, the cafeteria, the is, is there I a specific setting? I think just all of us back together on our soundstage and in, um, in Valencia and just like all the, you know, all of our dressing rooms were right next to each other. And, you know, me and Larissa running around like blasting, smashing pumpkins or no doubt, or real big fish or whatever we were into at that time and people yelling at us to turn it down and you know me and Darius running around and Jason I mean just yeah I think um hands down it would be that yeah that's wonderful I love that well thank you so much for joining me tonight and taking some time out of your your busy schedule to talk to little me who's uh just a fan from afar but hearing about me and my life and my work you know Absolutely. I appreciate you um just Abs as much. Absolutely I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here all right let's stop recording